Looking at our world from a theological perspective, this is the Theology Central Podcast, making Theology Central. Good morning, everyone. It is Saturday, February the 19th, 2022. It is currently 9.39 a.m. Central Time, and I'm coming to you live from the empty sanctuary of Victory Baptist Church located right here in the middle of nowhere, Texas. Thank you for tuning in because it is time once again for us to take our spotlight. It may not be that big of a spotlight. It may be a very, very small flashlight, but we're going to turn our the light that we have onto another Christian podcast so that you will subscribe to it, that you will listen to it, and that you will share it with others. Look, there the other day, I don't I think it was last Sunday, I was here inside the empty sanctuary of Victory Baptist Church waiting for people to show up. And I I had I, I think I got here about an hour early and I was kind of like going over my sermons and I think I got everything kind of ready to go. And I was just kind of walking around and I thought, you know what? I I've got a little bit of time here. Let's uh, let's let's get some spiritual food, right? Let's. In other words, I have I have the opportunity. Let's not waste it. So I grabbed my phone right here. I grabbed my phone. I opened up the sermon audio app and I went to live broadcast. And I believe at that moment there was around three hundred. I think it was three hundred and twenty seven live broadcasts that were underway. And I just looked at that. I'm like, that's absolutely insane. Like, what do I even choose? There's 327 live broadcasts. That was just uh, at a very specific time right there in the Sermon Audio app. That doesn't even count the, you know, thousands upon thousands of, of sermons that I, I mean, I, I can't give you an exact number. I know that I have my notifications that basically I subscribe to Sermon Audio via other podcast apps. And I have, I have, you know, where I have it set up. In fact, let me do this really quick because I'll just show you what I'm talking about. And I, I know I've talked about this so much, but this is the reason we're doing what we're doing uh, in this series of turning the spotlight on other podcasts. But let me, I'm going to do a refresh right here. Um, This is on one of my podcast apps. I'm doing a refresh, okay? I'm going to find, see where here, I've I've subscribed to so many podcasts. But I'm just going to go to Sermon, I'm just going to, yeah, here's Sermon Audio. So what I do, I subscribe to Sermon Audio MP3. And this is all the new sermons that come into Sermon Audio. Then I, I get these notifications and I'm always getting notifications. So let me just go through what has dropped so far today. Uh, there was a sermon, uh, I don't know how long ago this dropped. No one can run it for you. Uh, Wretched Radio, February the 19th, 2022. Because of unbelief, a chastening word, the view at Pentecost, the Lord bless thee, behold, thy king cometh, the spirit and the church, God's numbers, the invitation, divorce, papers without permission. Uh, uh, n- number 35, remember the overcomer, the God who gives and does not change. Jesus prays for Christian unity. Face to face, behold his glory, discernment for these times, deliverance from the old law. The Lord return relates to salvation, the millennial kingdom, more on windows, uh, more on widows, I should say, not windows, more on widows, victory in Jesus, way of love, walking in darkness, uh, Bible reading, our February the 19th, 2022 Bible reading, Exodus 2, Luke 5, Job 19, 1 Corinthians 6, February the 18th, 2022 Bible reading, Exodus 1, Luke 4, Job 18, 1 Corinthians 5, uh, lying, the devil's snare, your next action, uh, soldiers, soldiers one, COVID fear versus Christian faith. Are we cleansed or not? Pray for the pastor. Psalm 8 through 9 devotional. Into uh, Sir Gawain and Green Knight. Our intro to Sir Gawain and Green Knight. I don't know what that is. That that sounds interesting. Um, The right hand of fellowship. Uh, Psalm 60. Turn thyself from, uh, from signs to faith. Morning devotional thoughts. The Christian responsibility to the Old Testament. Becoming or escaping Babylon. Look, I could keep going here and go. There's probably, uh, uh, I don't even know how many has been dropped just today. That's on sermon. That's just sermon audio. That's just sermon audio. Now, I know they're sometimes referred to as broadcasters, not podcasts, but in a sense, they're podcasts, right? They're placing an audio, they're, that's, they're placing an audio message online for you to listen to 
based off an RSS feed. Well, yeah, we could go we could go through all of that to try to maybe give a, a technical definition. But basically, they serve us podcasts. That's one app. That's just one app. That's Sermon Audio. And then I could go to the Edify Christian Podcast app, or I could just go to any of the other podcast apps. There are so many things to choose from, so many things to listen to. There, there's no way that you can even hope to even try to figure out what you're going to listen to. And not only that, there, there's things you can miss. Not only that, sometimes I don't know if we take advantage of all that is there. There, there is a continual stream of spiritual food, nourishment, and thought available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And it, it's somewhat maddening that at a time period where you literally basically can get a seminary education on a daily basis, on a daily basis, without even having to pay seminary prices, right? I mean, you can study, 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 learn, learn, learn. It's all available to you 24-7. Yet if you look around at the state of American Christianity, just, just you tell me, and, and I know this introduction is going to take longer than, than it is, but I, I really want you to understand why we're doing this Christian Spotlight, Christian podcast, uh, Christian Spotlight on Christian podcast series. I, I want you to know why we're doing this because I really get bothered that I don't think people take advantage of what's available to them. It, it, it drives me crazy, but I want you to think about this. The church now, I think most everyone agrees, is more theologically illiterate than it has ever been, more biblically illiterate than it's ever been, even though we have more available. And in my mind, you can tell me if you if you think differently. I always thought it would work this way, that the time would come that there would be a famine, a, a spiritual famine, and people would not be able to find preaching. They would not be able to find theological teaching. They would not be able to find doctrinal teaching. That it would just be like, like basically in my mind, churches were going to close down. There would not be Christian radio. There would not be, you know, like you, you would just like, well, where I can't, like you're walking through the desert. Is there someone out there teaching God's word anywhere? Well, that's not the case. Now you may, you may question the quality of a lot of the teaching. Fine. I mean, you can sit there and say, well, the teaching today is not as good as it used to be. Just keep looking. There's great teaching all over the place. Now you have to, is there a lot of bad teaching? Yes, but there is, there, put it this way, even the bad teaching, if you think about it, if you use the bad teaching correctly, it can serve a good purpose because if you will take the bad teaching, listen to it, and then you do the work to study to try to explain what is wrong with it. And try, you can, that, that good teaching can still get you in to Bible study, still get you into thinking so that it can ultimately still benefit you. There is so much available. And I know I've said that in this series on, you know, on Christian podcasts, but I, I really, one of the things I want to try to do in this series is constantly remind you, look right there. I mean, I got my phone right here, just right here in my hand. Right? Like, I mean, just, just to, since we've been talking, uh, I just got a notification from Moody Radio. Um, you know, grab your Bible, coffee, and join us for our weekly Bible, Bible study uh, from 9 to 11. And uh, this was sent, you know, 40, uh, 48 minutes ago. So I guess that uh, I just saw the notification. And I've got all kinds of other notifications here, just all kinds of other notifications. Um, and that's... That just, that's just right there on my phone. That's just on my phone. It's just, I, I'm just constantly blown away with how much is available. And then what, you know, what I get frustrated with is by the end of the day, I realize how much I did not use what was available to me. I didn't use it. So we have to use it. So I try to turn the spotlight on different podcasts so that will be beneficial. Now we, we at our last, it's been a while since we've done an episode. And there's a couple of reasons why. And some of you have continued to email me podcast suggestions. I may not have responded to you, but I'm definitely looking at them. And some of them are going to show up in this uh, series. So, so just continue to send me whatever podcast you're listening to. Just anytime you listen to anything, let me know. Those in the Discord channel, if you listen to a podcast, just, just 
tell everyone, hey, I'm, I'm getting ready to listen to this episode and just post a link to it because people just trying to figure out, if, I mean, just trying to figure out what to listen to on a daily basis can be absolutely overwhelming. But I just, I just, just blows my mind. We have so much available and clearly it's not being utilized the way it should be. So I'm trying my best to, to, to fix that and to help that. Now, what I was giving, so there's been, there's been some delay in this series and here's the reason why. One, I am still impatiently waiting for the new Sermon Audio app. Sermon Audio is supposed to be releasing a brand new app that's a complete makeover of their current app. It's going to be called Sermon Audio 2.0. It was supposed to be last week. Then it was supposed to be this week. Now they're telling me next week. Uh, It better be next week. I keep emailing them. I'm, I'm probably starting to irritate them greatly, but I'm waiting for that because once that new app, I'm hoping in my mind, I'm envisioning what it's going to look like and how it's going to work. But based on everything I have read, it's going to be very much like your normal podcasting app where currently it doesn't really function that way. So hopefully what it'll be is you'll be able to follow your favorite broadcasters. Then we can create a list of the best broadcasters on Sermon Audio so that you can have that as an additional app. And then hopefully you'll get notifications if they go live. Hopefully you get good notifications whenever they add new content. And hopefully then you'll get more out of Sermon Audio. I mean, that's, we, 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 we don't want to waste that as an opportunity. So I've been kind of waiting for that to get that ready to go. Um, and we had also kind of So that's number one. That's been the first reason for a delay. The second reason for the delay is we were looking at, and we just started, I wanted you to find a podcast related to Bible colleges and seminaries. And we will get right back to that. But trying to review those podcast episodes take like, you know, four or five hours. So I kind of took a little break there, but we'll get back to them. And many of those seminaries and Bible college podcasts, quote unquote, um, are on Sermon Audio. So we, we really, I want that, I want the Sermon Audio app to be fixed. And when I say fixed, that it kind of enters into 2022. To me, it's still very outdated, the platform they're using and the structure that they're using. So that, so that's been why we've delayed. So what we're going to do is we're just going to turn the corner here today. And we're going to, and we're, we're going to get, we're not going to ignore the Bible, col- Bible colleges and seminary podcasts, because I still think that everyone needs about five or 10 of those. Uh, you know, you need to be subscribing to five to 10 good podcasts from Bible colleges and seminaries, they th- because that gives you insight on what the next generation of pastors are hearing, what they're being taught, what's happening in Bible colleges, what's happening in seminaries. And every Christian should be interested in that. Because that's also telling you what the church is going to look like five, ten years down the road. So um, I think I think that's very important. But what we're going to do today, we're going to turn our attention to a brand new podcast. Absolutely brand new podcast. And I, I hope that uh, you'll, you'll subscribe to this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, really what I think it's episode. It, it's technically it's episode two. But the way they're numbering it, it's episode one because their episode zero was kind of their introduction. I listened to the introduction. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to use that one. We're going to use their episode one because they really, it kind of gives us some insight in how they're going to cover certain theological issues. But this one is the Fundamental Baptist podcast, the Fundamental Baptist podcast. And we're just going to jump into this. We're going to try to review this entire episode. This is going to take a long time too. So that's another reason I I delay these sometimes is it takes, there's always so many other things to do. And if I do one of these, it can take two, three hours sometimes to work through them. But we're going to just see how far we can make this. Uh, Even if you're not a fundamental Baptist, even if you disagree with fundamental Baptist doctrine, I still think it's a podcast series or episode, or it's a podcast, it's a new podcast that the episodes are still worthy of you listening to because it gives you insight maybe into a world of Christianity you're not familiar with. Maybe you are. And it just kind of tells you what's going on within this theological stream. The Fundamental Baptist Podcast. It's brand new. It's a part of the, I think it's called the Independent Baptist Online College. 
I think it's what it's called, the Independent Baptist Online College. Now, I'm always looking for Bible colleges that I can enroll in because I will go to as many schools as I can possibly go. I've considered trying to enroll in this one, but it's always money situations. But uh, the uh, it, it's, it's so in a sense, it's connected to a college. So I guess in some ways it stays kind of within the same framework of what we tried to establish early on. But we'll, we'll just jump in and we'll see. I, I, there's a lot more information I could give you, but I'm just going to let their introduction kind of give you an idea of where they're going. Now, they're going to be playing some clips here from a lot of older independent fundamental Baptist preachers. Some of them are e- are easy for me to identify. Um, I think there's Jack Hiles shows up there, which, oh man, I would disagree with his theology in so many different ways. I think, uh, is, it, is it Fred Malone? I believe it's Fred Malone. I know the last name is Malone. Um there is, I can't, I think there may be one other. Most of the names, I, as soon as they start playing the clips, I'm like, oh, I know that one, I know that one. Um, some of them, I don't, maybe I don't, but you'll, you'll see. And you'll got to get an idea of what this podcast is all about. And if you, if you, and I, I, it looks like their podcasting hosting site is Podbean. Now, I know we have some listeners who use Podbean. This one, they actually host their podcast on Podbean. We tried to, I tried to figure out some ways to, to, to do some things on Podbean, but um, yeah, it, it didn't quite, uh, there's, sometimes I have all of these ideas, but there's a limited, uh, I have limited time and limited ability in what I can do, but uh, I'm glad that they're on Podbean, uh, that, that's, that's good, and uh, so if you, if you have that app, it'll be easy to find, if you don't have that app, I think you'll be able to find it on most platforms, I think most of the apps I've used, I've been able to find it. But if you need any help, just let me know, and we'll we'll, we'll help you find we'll help you track it down. All right. But here we go. Um, let's just jump in the the Fundamental Baptist podcast. Here's what it's all about, and uh, it's only only like four or five episodes have been released so far. So it's brand it's brand new. So it's always interesting to listen to a podcast from its beginning and see what it turns into. Here we go. Welcome to the Fundamental Baptist Podcast. There are many types of Baptists, but being a Baptist once meant that you were a fundamentalist. Over the years, many Baptists have strayed from the fundamentals and thus attacked those who remain true to the faith. This podcast will address the issues surrounding what it means to be a fundamental Baptist. Somebody said, Brother House, fundamentalists are changing, aren't they? No, fundamentalists don't change. Folks quit being fundamentalists. God says when the troubles come, he said, fight. You can't fight. He said, withstand. You can't withstand. He said, stand. What does it mean to stand? He said, don't change. What? Don't change what? Number one, don't change what you believe. Here we will reason concerning the scriptures about the doctrines we hold dear. We believe in souls being saved, lives being changed, and Bible doctrines being strengthened by the word of God. We believe in the local church, soul winning, missions, and everything taught in the King James Bible. I thank God tonight for this wonderful Bible. You know, I I thank God it's a perfect book, and I I love the Bible. Doesn't need any addition, no correction, nothing taken from it. Thank God tonight for the Holy Bible. I like it just like it is. We are not ashamed of being fundamental Baptists, and we want to encourage others to remain true to the Bible, their Baptist heritage, and to not change what they have been given. You just stick with the book. You can't beat this book. Why does every generation feel that we've got to change it just a little bit because our daddy did it as I said, and our granddaddy did it like that, and let's change it just a little bit. You change it, and things that are different are not the same. The same commit thou to faithful men. Thank you for joining us in our discussion of what it means to be a fundamental Baptist. Hello and Okay, there's their introduction. There's their introduction. The, the volume is a little bit low, or at least it appears on my side to be a little bit low, but I have it cranked in the software as loud as I can. So, yeah, again, once the, one of the, my constant complaint about many podcasts when it comes to Christian podcasts, there is a thing called a volume, all right? So if, if it was low, don't blame me, all right? But a couple of things here. The idea of a fundamental Baptist has, there has been a lot of, can I say, change. And I think what that word means, I think if we go back and if you go back to our study of the Niagara Creed, 
and and which was really uh, I, I I've I've talked a lot about kind of the the, the rise of the fundamental movement. But it, it, think about it this way: it really started with the idea of fighting for the fundamentals of the faith. Right. There was I've got this the series of books up there. I can see them. They're at the front of the church on a table. It was I think it's a four volume set, maybe a five volume set called the fundamentals. And I've tried to get everyone in my church to read them over and over and over and over. And I, I leave them right there <laughs> on the table uh, behind the pulpit. No one ever t- takes them. No one ever, I, I, no one ever touches them. But I'm constantly saying, read these books, read these books, because that's what fundamentalism really was. It was a fight for the fundamentals of the faith. They felt like the fundamentals were under attack because of higher criticism coming in from Europe, modernism, kind of the, what was the arise of of the kind of the evangelical movement and that there was a lot of compromise and, and that the fundamentals of the faith were being attacked and ignored and denied. So they're like, we're going to fight for the fundamentals of the faith. So, so, So there was an attitude of fighting standing, all right, and for the fundamentals of the faith. Now, sadly, the change that I was referring to was that it, it seemed to move away from the fundamentals of the faith. They, they seemed to, it seemed to move away from fighting for the fundamentals of the faith. And it really turned into, at times, almost a humanistic, legalistic approach, right? It, it became about you know, women wearing pants, going to movie theaters, playing cards, music. It, it became a, about a lot of these, I, I will call these standards and, and uh, almost, and I, I know if I say, if I say, if I even refer to it as legalistic in any way, shape or form, fundamentalist will get very mad at me and yell and scream and get upset. But put it this way, the, I, I think the fundamentals of the faith became almost were diminished. In other words, these doctrinal and theological fundamentals that everyone should fight for and stand for, and almost like they became secondary. And what became primary were things like the length of hair, a beard, <laughs> tattoos, music, uh, uh, you know, movies, playing cards, all of these things, they became primary. Now, no one, now listen, there's nothing wrong with trying to figure out what are, what are biblical standards, trying to live a life that is holy and a life that is godly. That's perfectly okay. But when those kind of external things become primary and the fundamentals of the faith become secondary, I think then your movement becomes problematic. And I think that's what happens. Now, you'll notice also in that intro, you, you can d- hear he mentioned the King James uh, Bible. Within the fundamental Baptist movement, the King James only movement is very prevalent. Now, I use the King James in all of our teaching, uh, but there's there's different. We could get into the whole King James only idea and theology. Um, there's there's different. I, I will say there's different streams of the King, King James only uh, idea. We won't get into that, but but within this movement, that is definitely uh, prevalent. Now, just so that everyone knows, for Full transparency. Um, I in my churches that I attended to in, in Nebraska were all independent fundamental Baptist churches. Now, when I first arrived at in Nebraska, I was a Lutheran. Then I left Lutheranism, became a, basically a Baptist, and then ended up in the independent fundamental Baptist world. I was ordained in an independent fundamental Baptist church, and if you look at most of my Bible college and seminary education, most of it, not all. Uh, well, about maybe about 50%, maybe 60%. I don't know. I'd have to try to break down all of the different schools I went went to. Um, a large number of them were independent fundamental Baptist, either independent fundamental Baptist seminaries, independent fundamental Baptist uh, colleges, or independent fundamental Baptist Bible institutes. And that Bible institute thing, well, we could go back into church history and I could explain how that all uh, why that uh, began to arise. Uh, what happened is uh, there was a, 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 there were many Baptists who got tired of the liberalism and modernism within the Southern Baptist Convention about the Southern Baptist Convention was compromising on the fundamentals of the faith. So people left the Southern Baptist uh, denomination, set up independent Baptist churches, and they didn't want people going to the Southern Baptist seminaries and Bible colleges. So they set up Bible institutes, which I, in some ways, I love that idea 
because it makes the responsibility of training men for the ministry not the seminary industrial complex where you send men away from your church to go get into debt, to get an education. They were trained within the local church, which I still think is, well, I still think that's the way it should be done. But all right, we're 25 minutes. See, these these reviews take forever. But I kind of want to just give you an idea that when, when I hear, when you hear fundamental or fundamentalism, I don't know what comes to your mind. What what I what I want to come to our mind is yes, the fundamentals of the faith. Let's grab those fundam- fundamentals, define them, and stand for them and fight for them. No compromise. But a lot of people want to add things to what is com- is considered fundamental, and in some cases, what becomes fundamental, I think, are the secondary issues and the primary issues of doctrine and theology gets kind of pushed down. If you go listen to our entire study of the Niagara Creed, the Niagara Creed is right there at the very kind of the rise of fundamentalism and the independent fundamental Baptist movement. All right, let's go back here and let's see how they handle this. Here we go. Welcome. My name is David Baker. Welcome to the Fundamental Baptist Podcast. I am one of the um, co-hosts for this podcast. And a little introduction about me. I'm the pastor of the Family Baptist Church in Columbia, Tennessee, vice president of Independent Baptist Online College, married to my wonderful wife, Laura, for 31 years. We have 11 children together. If you missed episode zero, it'll explain a lot more of what we're doing. So make sure you go back and uh, listen to that. On this uh, podcast, we're going to interview other pastors, preachers, have other guests on here. But the main person that will be on is my co-host, Tim Peterson, who is a youth director in our church and married to our old this daughter, Sarah. And so, uh, so many younger people today are going off the rails and totally, totally throwing away what they were taught. Uh, I appreciate Brother Tim, his beliefs, his convictions, and his life, and I uh, love serving the Lord with them. And I'm um, so glad that my daughter found a guy who um, loves God and wants to serve God, and um, and we have a great time serving together. So, uh, Brother Tim, tell us a little bit about you, your background, where you're from, your church, your pastor, uh, your family, your college, and uh, all of that. Yeah, so a little bit about me. I grew up in uh, Southern California, about an Okay, a couple of things here. One, again, this is it's their brand. I mean, they're a brand new podcast, and when you're uh, when you're doing podcasting, you got to work out a lot of technical issues. You're going to notice that at times the one person is speaking at one volume, the other person keeps coming in hot on the mic. And what I mean by that, it seems like he's kind of back here, and then he comes up in here. He's back here, and then he comes up in, and it gets right up on the microphone, and it gets really loud. But they'll work out those technical issues. Now, you may like what they're getting ready to do. It may drive you nuts, but they're going to spend a considerable amount of time here just giving a lot of their personal information, a lot of background. Now, I understand one, one, of, the re- one of the reasons you do this is you try to get a personal connection with the audience, letting them know who you are, a little bit about you, and then people have kind of a personal connection, and so that's great. You may think it's, some of you, it may just irritate you and say, get to the point, put it this way, everyone has criticism, everyone who listens to podcasts, they have criticisms and how it should be done, right? They, I mean, they will tell you, I get emails, you talk too fast, you talk too slow, you do this, you do that, you, 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 you pause to swallow or or yeah who knows i mean it's just amazing the criticisms you will get uh, people people have they want their podcast to work their way and they 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 get, they get upset about it but that's what they're going to do here it's going to take a few minutes but i'm going to try not to interrupt this but so that you can just kind of know who these individuals are uh and um it's kind of interesting you, you, you basically you have you know the father and then basically his son-in-law um as as the podcast and and I think that's kind of cool and uh, and well we're we're gonna see what doctrine the a theological issue they're gonna get to in this episode here we go. Our north of San Diego is where we were at in Wildemar, California. Uh, grew up my entire life out there and uh, grew up in a good family, good home, uh, good parents and uh, good siblings and things and. And uh, and it was uh, we grew up at, at a church uh, in Southern California at Wildemar is Faith Baptist Church is the church we grew up at and um, went to school there, went to the Christian school, uh, kindergarten through 12th grade, the whole nine yards got to uh, got to be there all growing up and 
sports and science fairs and uh, bus routes and all the different things and just enjoyed it and then um, went to college uh, in Kentucky, uh, met Sarah there and uh, we got married uh, going uh, just about going into my senior year, I think partway through my junior year and then finished out my senior year uh, on Independent Baptist Online College sort of right as it was launching, Uh, really enjoyed that, uh, learned a lot uh, from there and got my uh, pastoral theology degree from there. Uh, shortly thereafter, we moved down here to Columbia, Tennessee, and uh, we love it. We've been here for about five years now uh, and uh, got to do a lot of things and, and have really enjoyed it. So that's just a little bit uh, the synopsis. Awesome. Of it. That's great. And uh, I believe you have some children that uh, helped us have a lot of grandchildren. So tell us about them. Yep. So we were married in uh, July of 2016, and uh, at the time of this recording, it is January 2022, and we have five children, four and under, with one on the way in about the next month or so. So we will, at that point, have uh, six, four and under, uh, right before our oldest turns five. So God has been very good, and we're blessed and very grateful. Six children, four and under. Is that humanly possible? Uh uh, I guess it is. Didn't know it was, but I guess it is. <laughs> I guess that's how it worked yeah. out. See, you keep coming in loud on that mic. They keep that. It, it's a little. It, it gets a little irritating. I was listening to part of this late last night, just trying to see if, if I wanted to use this uh, episode. I, I didn't get super far into it, but I just remember going, "Man, that that's." But I, that's the kind of thing. Look. I, I'll hear things on my podcast that will drive me crazy as well. But th- these are some of the the growing pains you have when you first start podcasting. So again, I love listening to podcasts when they're brand new, just watching some of these issues be worked out in real time. All right, here we go. So you have them, um, you know, less than a year apart and have some twins in there. It is amazing. So uh, we love it. It's exciting. And uh, Sarah was our oldest girl. And so she was second mom and loves kids. And uh, and um, they're awesome. It's great to see what you guys are doing with them. So, so how old are you, Brother Tim? I am 26. 26 years old. So that puts you uh, at the bottom of millennial. Is that right? I guess so. so Something like that. So, uh, <laughs> so I thought millennials like, you know, hate IFB and uh, don't want to be fundamental Baptist anymore and change and all those things. Uh, is that not you? Well, that's what I've heard, that that, that is what uh, everyone likes to do and, and things like that. And uh, I think there's a lot of good people who um, who have grown up like me or in similar si- uh, situations to me and, and have been, um, you know, w- through whatever situation they've been through, uh, cho- chosen a different path. And uh, I pray for them and care about them, and, and I think they're saved and on their way to heaven. Um, I think, you know, many of us have chosen different paths, and I'm thankful for the path that I'm on. Um, but I think, uh, I think uh, for whatever reason, they've been persuaded. They've been uh, sort of uh, shown different things, and, and uh, if they're uh, if they weren't fully grounded uh, on certain issues from the Bible, I think it just was easy to to go a different route. And I think they're good people, and I love them. But we are uh, we have taken some different paths, some of us. Right. So that's good. And we'll do some podcasts where we talk about that, and uh, hopefully be able to help some people. You can definitely understand uh, when we see things that aren't right, and many of uh, the people have. You look at something like that's not right, that's not right, and the whole difference is what do we do when something isn't right? And again, that's for another podcast, but. Um, I, I do think it's interesting just because if you look at the IFB, the Independent Fundamental Baptist Movement, um, it definitely has declined in its influence power. I'm not saying it's still not there, but it just feels like, you know, that, that there was a time it, that, that Independent Fundamental Baptist churches were there were there were far more of them. They were they had clear there were things that distinguished them from other Baptist churches and now more and more of the what would be considered an independent fundamental Baptist church, many of those distinguishing marks are gone and they just kind of look like any other Baptist church. They, 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 they've kind of gone in more of a modern direction and they and many young people will, would say, I don't want anything to do with the IFB because all of their standards and all of their rules, many would call it legalism, and that they want a more modern approach to Christianity. So the IFB in this podcast, they're, they're, they they definitely want to point out. Well, see, we got we got someone here who's you know twenty six, 
he's younger. And look, he, he didn't go with that direction. So uh, it, it's just interesting that they they're, they seem to be aware of that obvious trend. Um, I think Christianity in general, I, I mean, if you just look at churches in general, have gone in a far more modern approach. And anyone who tries to stand against that, you're going to you're going to kind of be left behind a, a, a little bit. So, that, yeah, that, that's interesting. Just just something to just just to consider. We're going to try to I'm going to I'm going to try to let them get to the major doctrinal issue they're going to cover in this episode. Here we go. I appreciate Brother Tim and the uh, direction that he has uh, taken. Uh, so, all right, we've got a couple of announcements, disclaimers before we go forward into uh, this podcast. So if you have a question for us, feel free, anything, the fundamental baptist podcast at gmail.com i tried to do the initials and they were taken and so anyway it is what it is the <laughs> fundamental baptist podcast at gmail.com it should be pretty simple to uh, remember so if you have a criticism for us send it on that's okay we, we can handle it uh if you have a correction for us that's okay um and if you uh, have a question for us that's okay the fundamental baptist podcast at gmail.com uh, feel free to do that. And another disclaimer, okay? Now, I don't know that this is true, but some people say that my son-in-law talks too fast. Now, not for me, um, but when I listen to podcasts, most of the time I speed them up uh, so I can listen to them faster. Um, so anyway, my dad says, uh, your son-in-law talks too fast. Uh, so anyway, just a disclaimer there. And disclaimer uh, from my end, some people say that my father-in-law, uh, our pastor at our church, talks way too fast. Uh, and I never notice. It's never been a thing for me. I hear fast and talk fast. So uh, so we tend to uh, sort of feed off of that. <laughs> All right. So anyway, if it is too fast for you, go to your podcast and then turn the speed down. And then uh, hopefully that'll be okay. So, all right. Uh I just have to laugh there because... That's completely ridiculous. That, that, but, but as a podcaster, I'm telling you, you get emails that are just absolutely insane about what people will complain about. Like, like you spend an hour in this in-depth teaching and they'll be like, well, you cleared your voice or, or your voice made this sound or I heard this or what was this or that you do this and you did that and you repeated yourself seven times and, and da, 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 and you mispronounced this and you did this and, and you, you had your subject verb agreement was wrong and you know, you didn't do the, oh man, alive. And sometimes you're like, okay, I get it. I get it. I did everything wrong. Did you get anything from the teaching? Okay. Did you get anything from the teaching? Anything, but it's just amazing. The emails you will get. And it's just crazy. If you think we talk too fast, then just go to your podcast app settings and slow it down. I mean, um, but I, I I know that some people, when they send those criticisms, I know they mean well. I don't, I do know they mean well. I, I think they do. I think ma many mean well. I try to, I would put it this way. I try to approach it like they mean well, but at times it can just drive you mad because you just feel like, can I do anything right? I mean, do I do anything right at all? Anything anything. And then I've noticed, if you'll just look on pretty much anything, I don't care what it is. It can be sports. It can be music. It can be movies. If anywhere where something is posted online, just look at the comments. This movie is garbage and that actor is garbage and that singer is garbage and that's garbage. And I don't like this. And I don't like that. People love to just constantly complain and tear stuff down. So, um, you know, you just, you gotta, you gotta take it with a grain of salt. You really have to because it will drive you mad. At the same time, though, you got to be very careful because sometimes you're getting constructive criticism and you can just be like, well, another, another critical email. So you got, you got to, you got to try to uh, approach it, but it's just interesting that they're a brand new podcast and already there, there's uh, some criticism in that case about talking too fast. All right, here we go. Um, one of the things I think is the biggest problem um, and we'll discuss this often on this podcast, is sound doctrine. Sound doctrine. Um, sound doctrine is this. Doctrine is teaching. Sound means it's solid. It means there are no holes in it. This boat is sound. This engine is sound. There are no holes in it. There are no problems with it. Um, Second uh, Timothy 4.3 says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. 
but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And I believe that's exactly the problem that we see a lot because people come up with doctrine, especially what we're going to talk about in this issue. Um, there's doctrine, they're teaching, but boy, it's not sound. There's so many holes in it. And if it has a hole in it, then it's not sound. I don't know how many times I've, uh, Brother Tim, talked to people and they go, oh, preacher, I was reading this. I had this thought. And they tell me this idea they had from the Bible, like, okay. Okay, and I listen to it, and then I, I say, well, what about, and I'll bring up a scripture, and they're like, oh, okay, yeah, you're right, that doesn't fit. <laughs> and then they go on their way, um, but that happens so yes. many times. You have a thought, you think it's okay, I'm sure I've done that before too, but then what we're supposed to do is take that thought and make sure we run it, filter it through the Bible, and see if there are any holes in it. Um, there's a teaching that God gave me, and, and it's biblical, and it's solid, and was all the way through the Bible, but I'd never heard anybody else preach that. And so all right, a couple of things here. I have to point this out. I understand it, but sometimes it, it, it's a little frustrating, and maybe you'll understand this. I want to make sure you realize this. Every stream of theology within Christendom, everyone believes that their doctrine is sound and that everyone else's doctrine is unsound. Every, they believe that they have the correct doctrine and everyone has the wrong doctrine. And sometimes that can be maddening because it's like everyone thinks that they are right. At the same time, well, you have to try to figure out what is right and preach it and teach it that way. I just think that we have to realize that, that yes, we think we have the right doctrine and we have to be willing to, to challenge ourselves and to think it through and test it and question it with a never, where we're all in a pursuit of truth. We should all continue to pursue truth and always remain a little bit humble, right? Always remain a little bit humble. And I think we got to be careful. If someone presents a different idea, then we have to go, okay, let, let's, let's challenge this and let's test it. Not just immediately think that, well, you've got it figured out and they're, they're wrong. I, I think we, we have to do that. I'm not saying that that's what they're doing. I'm just saying that we always have to remain a little bit of, of humility. Now, I do get a little nervous there that, that kind of said a teaching God gave me. No, he, that, he had a teaching that God gave him. Now, he's going to do the right thing. He's going he's to bring this teaching up to a lot of people, asking them to consider it and see if there's any holes in the doctrine. I, 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 do, I do like that approach because you always have to test it and challenge it. I just don't know what that means that God gave you the teaching. I, I don't know exactly, like, was it divine inspiration? How did, how did that sounds, that sounds very charismatic in, in some way, shape, or form. But well, let's continue because we're running out of time already. Here we go. So um, I would bounce it off a bunch of preachers, older preachers, mean preachers that are going to tell me exactly what they think. Uh, I was at a conference and asked this um, older mean preacher out for breakfast and paid for it and ran this by him. And uh, and he said, I said, so are there any holes in it? He goes, no, I can't see any holes in it. That sounds like, uh, like kind of okay, good. Um, and I think sometimes we don't do that. We have a thought, we run on it, or we read something, or we listen to something, and then we get on that. So a sound doctrine is really a big deal. And just to illustrate that, eternal security, okay? The salvation, once you get saved, you're eternally secure. God gave you everlasting life. Eternal life is forever. You can't lose it. You're born into God's family. Uh, you're always one of God's children. Uh, when we do wrong, God spanks us. We may lose rewards, but we're always one of his children. There are no holes in that. You could bring up all day, what about, what about, what about? And I promise you, biblically and logically, we're going to be able to get that. That is sound doctrine. There are no holes in that. And so, the Tim, how many times have you heard and seen things like that that's just like, boy, you shake your head and go, that, that's not, that doesn't make sense. I 100% agree. And uh, even beyond that, I don't know, there's been many times where I've, you know, just been reading the Bible on my own. And then I go and I think, man, I just found this this thing that my dad never saw in the Bible in all his years, or my, you know, my pastor never saw in all these years in the Bible. And then, you know, you bring up your idea, uh, to, uh, you know, I've brought up different things to my dad or, or whoever. And, and then they're like, you know, well, you got to think about this part in the Bible and compare this, compare scripture with scripture. And then, and then you start to, con you, you look at it and like, yeah, that, that wasn't quite the right thought on, you know, and you just so easily get, get stuck on one particular passage and sort of get uh, into the weeds of it and out of the context and not comparing it with other parts of scripture. And you get to, uh, you know, you sort of just naturally get messed up. And I think sometimes that can happen to all of us. Um, and then, but if we don't uh, com 
compare it with scripture. And then beyond that, we don't go run it by other people and get second right. opinions on something, especially on a, on a big issue uh, from God's word. I think it can be dangerous. No, that's so true. I totally agree. Acts 17, 21. I think a lot of people are like this too. They're always looking for some new thing. Acts 17, 21 talks about that. They spent their time in nothing else, but either to tell or to hear some new thing. And um, the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. If there's something new, it probably is going to be heresy. Um, um, and and we're going to talk a lot about that in another podcast uh, and not to do that. Also, they're not like what you just said. The people of Berea, the Bible says they were searching the scriptures daily to see whether those things uh, were so. And boy, that's such a big deal. They were more noble than those in Thessalonica, Acts 17, because they searched the scriptures daily. They didn't just hear it and take it. They didn't just read it and take it. And so many people do that. Um, and, and I'm amazed how many people don't think through that. I was a freshman in Bible college. We went to hear some guy preach locally in the area. He was bragged about as a great uh, preacher. And, uh, and in that sermon, he preached Lordship Salvation. He preached um, getting a word of knowledge. He preached against our pastor. Uh, he made this statement, just because you have a big church close to here doesn't mean God is blessing you. The closer you get to the cross, people <laughs> will leave you. Okay, he's preaching this in Crown Point, Indiana. What big church is close to there? Okay, I got back to the dorms. Honestly, Brother Tim, I asked three or four. I'm a freshman. I asked three or four guys that were there. What did you think about that? Man, that was awesome. Man, that was great preaching. And I repeated back to them what he said. Uh, I, I, I didn't hear that. Do you see the way he jumped over the pulpit? You see the way he ran on the top of the pews um, down? That's yep. all they saw. They didn't hear. They didn't listen. They didn't discern. And they obviously didn't search the scriptures. When I got in the car, I was waiting for my my friend, Brother Mark Bush, if you know him, um, good missionary and uh, teaching at House Anderson College now. I was waiting for him to say goodbye to his girlfriend. I'm sitting in the car, and um, I said, please tell me that wasn't right. Because, <laughs> boy, the Holy Spirit inside was just going, oh, this is wrong. And he looked at me, and he said, brother you just heard heresy tonight. And I said, okay. Um, but it's amazing how many people don't do that. They don't search. All right. Now this, there's, there's a lot here that we could, we could really just stop here and take this all apart because they do bring up some issues. Uh, people's ability to discern if what's being preached is taught, uh, if people's ability to discern if what's being taught is accurate and right versus them getting caught up in the spectacle of the preaching or teaching. In other words, if, if, if there's a, someone who's a famous pastor, well-known pastor, uh, someone who, who has a little bit of celebrity behind them, some people can be blinded by the celebrity and can't discern if what is being preached is true or false because they are blinded by the celebrity of the individual. And this, and this happens within... Within Christianity, there's almost a tribalism that if, if that preacher is a part of my tribe, my theological stream, my theological side, then, then the tendency happens to be, well, the, the, you know, the tendency happens to be that, you know, that they can't do anything wrong. They have to be right. That, the, the tendency is just to immediately defend and say, that is great. That is wonderful. That is awesome because they're on our side. They're, they're in our tribe. But that, that, we can't be blinded by that. We have, to be, we have to look beyond our tribe. And what we have to look for is what is being taught. Is it true according to scripture? We have to, we have to be willing to see that. But I, I've been in those situations where, you know, a sermon is over and I was like, that was the greatest sermon I've ever heard. And I'll be like, what in the world? Okay, is it just me? Am I just being too critical? Because you don't want to be the one that's just always, you know, you're nitpicking and taking everything apart. See, it, there, there's a balance here that has to be maintained. And, and, and yeah, we, we, could, we could do an entire podcast on this. But there's, there's a balance that must be maintained here. You, you want to be discerning, but you don't want to be just the one nitpicking and critical and tearing everything apart as if somehow you've got it all figured out and you're the one who's always right. At the same time, you don't want to be like, hey, whatever, they, whatever is preached is wonderful and great, and I'm never going to criticize anything. How to maintain that balance? It's got to be humble. You've got to have humility. You've got to use discernment. 
but you but you uh at the same time you don't want to be arrogant thinking that you've got it all figured out and at the same time you don't want to be just accept anything that you hear or you definitely don't want to find yourself being blinded by celebrity so um i think that's interesting now you'll notice there and and them telling that story that clearly they are opposed to lordship salvation now that I think that is interesting. I think that's important. Uh, there are that the lordship salvation. I don't know how it's still a relevant issue in the church. The term may not be as used as much as it used to be. I don't know how much it will still divide people, but I know this that sadly, once again, you're either in the lordship camp or the non lordship camp, and you you have to you know follow the team. And I hate that. How about we just figure out what the Bible has to say? And, and, and guess what? Um, there may, I may, I, sometimes this is just crazy. I, I was in the Lordship camp. I've now, I, I, I have decided that many of those things just don't work biblically, even in reality that I think they fall apart, but, but here's the thing. Sometimes what will happen if you leave the Lordship camp, then whatever the other camp is, you then have to follow and got to make sure that you dot every I and cross every every T or then that camp will throw you out. And I hate that. It's like, why do we have to find a camp? Why don't we just try to figure out what does the Bible have to say in regards to salvation? And I, and I can't worry about, well, okay, if you're in the Lordship side, you've got to say everything exactly like the Lordship people do or you'll get thrown out of that camp. And then if you're not in the Lordship camp, whatever the other camp is, you've got to dot the I and cross the T or they'll throw you out of their camp. It's like, why does everything got to be according to a camp and we just just try to figure out what the Bible has to say in regards to all of the issues related to salvation? But um, so I, 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 I like this idea of discernment it's just, how do you find that balance? And uh, it's always hard to maintain, but all right. I know I, 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 I can only, uh, there's so much more we could say there, but we'll just have to move on. All right, here we go. The scriptures, they don't discern. They don't look, they hear something. Oh, wow, that's new. That's cool. That's neat. Especially too, if it's something that they want to know, they want to believe that. And uh, I think that's true. There's yep. so many things they want to believe that when someone runs it across and they like it, that's as, that's all they need. They're all into that. Yeah, and that that actually that story sort of reminds me of uh, a time in in college uh, when when we were there, and and I think Sarah would remember this. You probably would too. We I think we gave you a call, but we were sitting in in college chapel, and there was a, a visiting pastor who came in and preached all about lifting up Jesus, right? And it, the whole sermon on lifting up Jesus, and and uh, and totally took that passage out of context. Um, and and in regards to uh you know lifting him up and it's all about just praising Jesus and it has nothing to do with signifying the death uh that he uh that he died and and with Jesus being lifted up on the cross right and everyone's just amen and amen and and the uh, you know the teacher afterwards gets up and man so good lift up the name of Jesus and the way he taught it and preached it it was completely out of context and we we're like that doesn't make any sense but you sort of just you know uh you you listen and think whatever's being said from from there is true and there's uh there's no discernment and sometimes i feel like yeah. you know we can sort of uh get a lack of discernment in certain situations absolutely so many things like that and 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 really that's what we want with this podcast um we're not mean angry hateful now sometimes i promise you we will get um, animated in this because these things are important uh but boy we love god and love life i love to laugh and have fun uh but boy when you see false doctrine messing up people messing up families messing up couples um the episode zero, I talk about this, but my assistant pastor that just went totally off, pulled so many people away and people that had never drank were now drinking. Now they're getting drunk. Now they're bouncing in a bar. Now they're divorced. They had never even drank before, but he started teaching, oh, there's nothing wrong with drinking. Guess what? That's all they needed. And boom, they're gone. And they saw the things of that. And we'll talk about that. That will definitely be an issue down the road. But all right. So um, we want to we wanna get into this. And this is really big. So we're going to talk about a new doctrine that I had never heard about. I've been preaching now 32 years. I have never heard anyone do and talk about this. And this. Okay. Now, this is interesting. All right. So they, they took almost 17 minutes 
to do their big introduction. And obviously, if I'm reviewing it, their 17 minutes now turns into our 54 minutes. Okay, so I apologize for that. But again, the goal here is just to let you kind of get an idea of what these podcasts are about so that you will either decide to subscribe or not to subscribe. So I, I can't really apologize for, you know, how long it takes. I really can't. I mean, I do, I feel bad because I'm going to get emails going, that that was a waste of time. But no, it wasn't because you got to hear a little bit of what this podcast was about. And we got to talk about some uh, important uh, subjects. But here's what he's getting ready to do. And now I find this interesting. Now, this is where I stopped it last night because I'm like, wait a minute. So he's, he's going to talk about a, a, a theology that he's never heard. And I, I think he said 20 something years of preaching. He's never heard of this theology. And I'm like, well, okay, what, what is he getting ready to talk about that he's never heard of? Like, I'm thinking like, is this some theology I've never heard of? And, and if it, if it's something brand new, then that's awesome because we are together going to hear about a brand new theology that is out there that, We've all missed. If it's not brand new, I'm going to be, and then there's going to be a part of me like, where have you been? So I'm really shocked about how he could be a pastor. I think he's even a teacher in the, in the, in a Bible college. And there is a theology out there that he's not even aware of. I, I'm really interested in a, what is this theology? What is this theology that's out there that, I guess is so mysterious that he's never heard of. How new is this? So I'm going to back this up just a little bit because, again, I'm just a little, I was a little taken back by that statement. I'm like, whoa, wait, what, 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 what is this theology? So let, here we go. Well, um, we want to, we want to get into this, and this is really big. So we're going to talk about a new doctrine that I had never heard about. I've been preaching now 32 years. I have never heard anyone do and talk about this. And 32 years. Okay, I think I said 20 something. 32 years he's been preaching and he's never even heard anyone talk about it. Never even heard anyone talk about it. And now I'm I'm really that's and he's saying brand new. So I'm going to I want to know the date. Like when did this do- new doctrine arrive? Uh, when did it arise? Where, who where did it originate from? I I mean, I'm th- th- <laughs> You've got my attention right here. This man's been preaching for 32 years. He's never even heard anyone talk about it. Are you interested? I'm interested. Let's see what this is. This came from uh, some guys. We're not going to use our name of the podcast, not trying to promote that. And hopefully um, I'm corresponding with these guys and trying to help them. And hopefully. Now, when he says he, he got this from from some guys and he won't mention any names that that I don't like that because if you're going to give me a new doctrine we need names now is he saying this was sent to him by some people he doesn't want to give the names of the people who sent this to him I understand that but if it's a new doctrine we need to know the names associated with the new doctrine I need to know the, the seminaries the bible college the books the systematic theologies I need to know everything about this if we're going to address it, but he's, he's supposedly corresponding with people with this new doctrine. I, I, I want to know what this is. I really do. Here we go. Hopefully that we can, hopefully this podcast can, uh, hopefully they would take this as a kind um, rebuke where the Bible says, reproof, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Hopefully they could take this and go, okay, man, we were off on a little bit and hopefully we could help them. Um, but, um, but I never, never ever even heard this. And it was two guys that went to college where I went to college. One guy that went to college where you went to college. And, and they just have this doctrine on the new covenant that they have totally, totally messed up. And we don't have time in this podcast, and this may be a part one and part two, uh, even on this one. We don't have time to go in and teach all about covenants. But a covenant is a commitment that holds power. Uh, all right, so let's stop right here. It's a, a new doctrine, a new teaching about the new covenant. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm very interested in what this, what could this be? What could be this new doctrine about the new covenant? Well, look, what, 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 how, how widespread is this teaching? All right, here we go. Um, Webster's Dictionary defines covenant as usually a, us, a usually formal, solemn 
binding agreement. Okay, in the Bible, there's the uh, there's the Adamic, um, the Adam covenant. There's the uh, Noah covenant. There's the Abraham covenant, the Abrahamic covenant. There's the Israel covenant. There's the Mosaic covenant. There's the David covenant that uh, someone from his family line would always be. Uh, on the throne of uh, Judah. And then there's a new covenant talked about in Jeremiah 31 and Matthew and Hebrews and this new covenant. Um, and what they say is this new covenant is doing away with everything of the old. Okay, I got that. Um, but boy, how they take that and how they interpret that is just totally wrong. So that nothing else in the Bible we need to do or go by except accept Jesus as your savior. That's it. And then just live in Jesus and rejoice in Jesus and enjoy Jesus. And boy, that's good. That sounds good. Uh, and boy, people love that. But biblically, there's so much more that God still does want us to do. And so I'm gonna read Hebrews um, 8, 6 through 13. Okay, I'm not, now this, I, this is just interesting. I, like, how widespread is this doctrine? Is this just some things some guys they know came up with? And it sounds like what they're saying is that the new covenant does away with everything in the old. And so that all we have to do is have Jesus as our Savior, and that's it. There, There's no more requirements. There's, there's just nothing else you have to do. Now, I don't exactly where are they going with this. Well, we're going to have to wait till next time to find out. So here's what we're going to do. Since we're at an hour, we'll stop and I'm just going to come right back in and do another and do the next part. And we'll start right here with, we'll go back to the like 18 minute mark and we'll just jump right in. Uh, and then this will be separated. So that gives you kind of an introduction of who these people are, kind of how they approach it. You, you can, I'm getting ready. I think I'm going, okay. I thought I was going to have to sneeze for a second. All right, so I was going to like, mute the mic, mute the mic, hurry up, mute the mic. Okay, but I'm good. Um, and that kind of gives you a little bit of idea of what this podcast is. Um, and yeah, I, I, I mean, there you go. I, there's a lot more I could say. That they, they brought up some interesting things about doctrine. They brought up some interesting things about discernment. Um, and I, I think all of that, we, we could we could pursue that in different ways. Typical, typically when I hear things like this and I start thinking about doctrine and I start thinking about discernment, I think about how criticisms, I, there, there's, it'll show up in future uh, podcast episodes. Just you, trust me, everything I hear shows up in some way, shape or form. And sometimes it will kind of set me down a certain path that we need to address certain issues. So some of the things we just kind of briefly mentioned there, we will, we will talk about in greater detail at a later time, but we'll come back in and try to figure out what this, this new covenant teaching is. It's just interesting that they're really their first major episode is about this teaching that, that and if they don't identify the origins and the who and the where, if, then, then really this, they're not doing, they're not, they're actually doing a disservice because if this is really a serious issue, then we need, they need to let everyone know where this is, where this is at. And I look, I want to know about it because if it's something that's starting to spread, then we need to know what it is so that we can address it and we can talk about it now. So, um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm interested to know what this is and how this theology plays out. I hope they have authoritative quotes from the people who are teaching it. Um, because we really want to know exactly what this is and what they are referring to. And we'll do that here in just a few minutes. We'll stop now. We'll come back live and we'll finish this up. Um, and we'll be back in just a few minutes. You can email me your thoughts, newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com. And so I'll just say this, that the podcast that we were just listening to is the, I've got it pulled up right here, from Podbean, the Fundamental Baptist Podcast. The Fundamental Baptist Podcast. The Fundamental Baptist Podcast. If you type in, the, uh, in fact, let me look at the entire web, the entire, if you type in the Fundamental Podcast. Uh, let me see here if I can get the whole thing. Uh, yeah, the, the, the Fundamental uh, Baptist Podcast dot podbean dot com. You can find the website. The Fundamental Baptist Podcast dot podbean dot com. That's the actual website for the podcast. 
I would challenge you to subscribe to it. Look, they've only done, I guess, five episodes because the first one is episode zero. They've only done five. Um, it's, I would tell you, just listen to it. Give it a couple of months and just see how it develops, what it turns into, how it improves. And, and it'll just give you, again, insight. And if we're getting ready to learn about some new doctrine out there, then the whole podcast will be worth it just for that. But we'll come right back and we'll take this apart in the next episode. And that will happen here shortly. Thanks for listening. God bless.